Uh, here's a game. Marcus Fontaine. Let's try um, Knight F3. That Reti opening. Goes C5. Okay. Yeah, all kinds of moves are possible after Knight F3. I think Knight F6 and D5 are the most common. But he's just going to go with an English setup, it looks like. Or some kind of Queen's Gambit <laughs> type of setup. Queen's like it like I played a Queen's pawn opening. But I didn't. I wonder if I could play with C5 here. C4. Just go with C4, encourage him to push that pawn forward. If he actually takes, I can check and um, get the pawn back, or maybe play knight to a knight a3 and get the pawn back that way. Okay, well, I can go for the double fianchetto now. He didn't respond in any way. Um, although he could push on. Yeah, that's true. He can do that. So, let's see. He, um, well, I don't have to worry about him pushing on to D3 immediately. I can just take it. But maybe I want to block it so that I can play E3 and, and force some kind of exchange there. Well, E3 opens up a line for my bishop, too. I mean, D3 opens up a line for my bishop. And now, do I want to go with um, do I want to go with e3 immediately? He's not pinning my knight, so um, it's not a problem just yet. Yeah, why don't I see if I can undermine it? And he can't play e um, he can't play e4 in this position because I can just take it. Well, until he moved the bishop there, now he can play e4. So let's take. Um, uh, not so fast. Let's see. I need to play this first, don't I? <laughs> if I take, and he takes with the bishop, it's not so easy to uh, to defend my rook in the corner. <laughs> in fact, it just is trapped there. <laughs> Got to watch out for those little tricks. Yeah, I could have taken with the knight. That's the that's the trick. If I take with the pawn, he takes with the bishop. I take with the knight. Okay, now I get to take, and we'll see what he does. So if I take with the knight now, it opens up this diagonal for my bishop. It looks good. And um, let's just keep on taking. And then I can bring my knight over. Um, yeah, actually, I have to be a little careful. So knight a3 maybe, knight to d2, uh, defends the rook. The rook is hanging, but it, it leaves the pawn hanging. So maybe knight to a3. And from a3 it can go to c2. Yeah, it's kind of an interesting configuration here. It seems I do have some pressure on this um, light squared diagonal. I can't move the b-pawn forward now. My knight could go to b5, hitting the queen. Um, or he could just win a pawn. Hmm. So knight b5, queen takes, queen takes, rook takes. Knight here, rook goes to b8. Or um, here's what I should do. I should play queen to f3. And if he takes with the queen, then I bring the rook over. And if he trades here, I can take the rook with check and then take the queen back. So it looks like that's a, a tactical a tactical defense of that d-pawn. And let's see if Marcus Fontaine, who's been moving lightning fast, yeah, he, sees, uh, <laughs> he either noticed the tactic or he wanted to get his rook off the diagonal in any case, regardless of what I was playing. So if I play knight to c2 now, he can bring his queen in to c3. That's kind of awkward. Well, but my knight comes over here to e3.
or I could defend it with queen to um, queen to e2. Yeah, probably I want to leave the knight there, play queen e2, and then push the uh, push the d pawn forward. So he goes after the a pawn. Is that a good idea? Can I get something directly going against his king? Well, my, my uh, knight is hanging, so I need to do something about that first. Knight e3, he takes the a pawn. I defend the b pawn, I guess, so I don't go two pawns down. But then I'm in um, okay shape to bring my knight in to maybe the f6 square. Knight g4 to f6. So well, we'll start with, start with knight e3. See how it goes from here. See if he wants to take that A-pawn after all. He's got all his uh, pawns on light squares, so it's kind of um, in the way of his bishop, but it sort of makes it hard for my bishop to, to join in the attack. So I can get a knight, for example, into the dark squares, but it's hard for the, the bishop to really join in. Okay, well, we'll see if his queen is out of play over there. Where can it come back? It can come back to... Um, the queen can come back to d2. You can hit it with the rook again. I guess what I really want to say, knight g4, queen f6, knight h6 would be would be interesting. Let's start working on that. So he's going to play bishop to um, c6, hitting my queen. and uh, trying to trade off my light squared bishop. So that solves his problem with the light squared bishop, but I get my queen to f6 then. So bishop c6, queen f6, bishop takes, king takes, it's his move. But um, but my knight is coming to, um, to h6, I don't think he can stop it at that point. Oh, he could play knight to, he could play knight to f5. And I could try knight to uh, knight to e5 maybe. Okay. Well, he's pausing to think. I guess the appearance, the sudden appearance of checks from my knight has caused him to worry a little bit. <laughs> they, the checks weren't there before, but now they are. Let's see. He, starting with king to g7 doesn't really help. Ah, so he brings his bishop in to defend. Still, yeah, I have to bring the queen up before I can play the knight check. So let's go ahead and go for that. See how he wishes to defend. I think maybe he could just play king to king to f8. Is that possible? Knight here because he's defended f7, he could play after knight h6, maybe after king here, king f8. Oh, so he goes there, covering that square. So yeah, that's that's not bad. 
And that um, I was thinking I could move the knight first and chase his knight away with um, g4, but but then my knight is on this e4 square and he's got um, and he's got f7 defended. My knight is on e5 rather, and he's got f7 defended. How about if I trade trade off that knight this way with my bishop? Rather than chasing it to a pawn with a pawn. Bishop takes knight, pawn takes, and then knight to um, h6. The king goes to f8. I have a check in the corner. The king goes to e uh, e7, and I might have a check on this file if he took with the e pawn. Hmm, yeah, it could be interesting. We'll see. And, uh, well, I've just sacrificed a pawn to get to this position. So I think maybe, maybe his play with the queen grabbing pawns over here was a mistake. Depends. Depends on how the attack works out. Well, at least he's got to uh, spend some time looking for a solution. Ah, that's an interesting solution. So I can uh, check, and his king can go to f8 or to h8. Um, I could play h4 to threaten h5. h4, I guess his knight will come to um, to the h5 square, chasing my queen away. So let's go with the check. And then let's go with um, <clears throat> g4. That keeps his knight out of this uh, h5 or f5 squares. And uh, then I can push the h-pawn forward, exchange out on g6 on take take with the bishop there because this, this f-pawn will be pinned. So pawn takes, pawn takes, bishop takes. Brings another piece to bear. So he doesn't want to allow that, understandably. Goes for this. Can I avoid the trade here? It's not so easy. Not so easy. Let's see. You know, my queen, with my queen on this diagonal, I also have a move like rook to b2, chasing his queen. But you know, the queen keeps pressure on my rook and pawn by going to a3. Bring my rook to defense of the um, bishop. Or I could just take. Yes, that's what I have to do here. Maybe I can still bring a rook over and soften up his pawns. Oh, I had mate, of course. <laughs> I just take I just take the pawn with my queen and its checkmate. Hmm, that's pretty silly. Well, he can't defend. He can't defend f7 anyway. <laughs> so he didn't wait for me to spot that uh, that he played a move that allows checkmate. Well, that was that was kind of amusing. Anyway, I guess I will upload this and do a postmortem. See you guys later. Bye.